Hi everyone and welcome to a new video on my channel. This is a little bit different to what I usually post and I am thinking of posting more sewing videos since that that's what I've been recently getting into. Anyway, this one is about the making of this medieval slash fantasy dress and this is to be worn as both a costume cosplay type of thing as well as a modern day dress um, that can be worn at formal occasions. So we've styled it both in a modern classic vintage way as seen here as well as the medieval fantasy version which has a tiara and a long gold belt. So you can see the two different stylings here. This is the modern vintage version and um, after this clip we will show the medieval fantasy version again. Um, but anyway, this video itself is just on the foundation garment for this dress, which is the inbuilt corset. So that is how the dress lies really flat on the stomach. It's because it has a corset. And that's what this video today will be going through. And without further ado, let's begin. This is my pattern for my corset. I've got a front, side front, side, side back and a back piece. I should also mention that I followed a tutorial that I found online to make this pattern. I'll link the tutorial in the description below. So I've got five pieces and what I've done is made sure to have the waist, what do you call it, where my waistline is. Um, marked so when I trace these pieces out onto my fabric I can mark where the waist is and then when I go to sew the pieces together I can just match them up at the waist and it doesn't matter if these match up or not um, because I can also just trim that later on so now I'm going to cut this out of my fabric and the fabric that I'll be using is the exact same that I used for my mock-up yeah so it's just a plain cotton drill in a burgundy color because the dress I'm making is burgundy so I want everything to match and then for the binding I'm just using some poly cotton fabric time to cut it out okay so I've got two folds along here and I'm going to line up the center front with those folds And also remember that I need to make room for the seam allowance so I don't want the pieces too close together and then finally the back piece and the seam allowance is going to be 1.5 centimeters you should probably use more pins unlike me so your fabric doesn't shift all over the place especially if you're cutting out four pieces at one time next thing that I like to do is to mark on my pattern pieces where the waistline is and also put the number on so I don't forget which piece is which so what's this number two and I also like draw the number the way that this should be so like if that's the top and that's the bottom I'll draw the number two this way so I know that that's the top and that's the bottom <laughs> I just draw a line for the waist. Do that for all of the pieces underneath it too. And then once you've done that, you can take out the pins. And just also remember to put the number two on all the other pieces as well. Otherwise, I will definitely forget. And then repeat that for all of the other pieces. Now onto the sewing. I've got piece number one here which is the front and this is the center front marking and what I'm going to do is sew pieces two, three, four and five on this side and then same thing on this side two, three, four and five. So I've got piece number two here and what I need to do is match up 
these waistline markings and also just make sure that these sort of look right you don't want to match this up to this side and then have like this weird gap what I'm going to do is sew right sides together so my right side would be the one that doesn't have all this chalk on it so I'm going to flip my piece over to the right side which is nice and clean no chalk and then the right side of piece number two which is this clean side is going to lay on top and I'm going to match up where the waist is and then pin that in place and then you're just going to sew all along that line and don't worry too much if like your ends don't meet um, you can always trim this down later and I always like accommodate for that by having like so much excess fabric um, just in case I need that. So now I have to repeat that same step for all of these pieces. That's all pieces sewn together. Now I have to do this all again so I can have the lining as well. But yeah, essentially that's what it will look like. And then um, I will need to double this. So here I've got my two pieces. Um, so they're both the same. And what I've done is I've cut into the seam allowance just to let the fabric ease a little bit more around those curved edges. And what I'm going to do with this um, cotton tape is attach it to the seam allowance of each panel. So um, just so like a small stitch just to the seam allowance to keep that in place along the lining fabric of the corset. Okay, so I'm back and I've sewn the waist tape to the waistline along the seam allowance. So you can see my stitching is just to the seam allowance and not actually attached to the, um, to the lining fabric. It's just on the seam allowance and that's the whole way across. And I've also made sure to keep the seam allowance facing in the same direction on either side. And now what I need to do is sew the other panel to this, to this um, lining fabric. So this is the fashion fabric, and that's the lining fabric. I've just used the same fabric for both, and I'm going to sew along the back seam where the lacing is going to be. So to do that, I'm going to turn this over so the right side is facing outwards, and then I'm going to lay the right side of my fashion fabric on top of that. Like that and then I'm just going to match up piece number five on um, both sides and then sew. Okay so now those two um, back seams have been sewn, so along here and also along here and now I'm going to just trim off Trim off some of these threads and also trim off the um, waist tape just so it matches the seam allowance or is a little bit longer. And then I need to turn this right side out and make sure that the fold um, is along the back edge of the corset, so piece number five. And then I'm just going to give that a good press. 
Okay, so I've given the corset a good press with the iron and what I've done is I've made sure that the seam allowances on um, either side go in different directions. So I don't know how well I can show you this. So the seam allowance on the lining is going this way and the seam allowance on the fashion fabric is going the opposite direction. And what I've done is I've tried to match up the seam lines as best as possible and then pinned along that so I can stitch in the ditch. I, th I think is what it's called. Um, so that's just stitching on top of those seam lines. And if I turn this over to the lining side, you can see that where I've got the pins, they more or less match up to the seams on the lining fabric. So hopefully when I sew this all up, my um, seams will match up to the, these seams here. Um, but if not, I don't really care because this is the lining and no one will see it. Okay, it's the evening now and I'm going to pick up from where I left off and that is to sew in the ditch on each of these seams for each panel. So for sewing in the ditch, I'm matching up my needle with where the seam line is, sewing that down. So I've sewn in all of the ditches. I don't know if you can see, but um, my stitching is like hardly visible. And when I turn it to the lining side, um, there might be some stitching that's gone outside of the line, um, which I don't really mind. It's the inside, so yeah. To help me figure out how long I want the corset to be, I'm using one of these zip ties um, because I'll be using these zip ties for the boning. Yeah, I bought like a hundred pack of these cable ties. They're um, 7.6 millimeters thick. Yeah, so that's what I'll be using for the boning. And because that's the maximum length, I'm going to measure that against the longest panels of this corset and mark um, like where I want the panels to finish. I'm just going to draw on, a, on with chalk and then here I've marked out how far up on my chest I want it to come and then if I put this boning up against this really long seam I can mark down here where I want the corset to finish. So those mark where I'm going to trim but I think I'm going to sew in the boning channels first. Now I don't know if I want to do this the same time that I sew the boning in or if I want to sew the channel separately and then put the boning in. Well last time I sewed the channels first so I guess I'll just do that again since it worked. So next to the seams that I've got currently and I make sure to leave like a little bit of a gap. This is what I mean. I make sure when I put the foot down that I have a little bit of a gap. So I have room for the boning within the boning channel. I'd rather the boning channel's too big than too small where I have to unpick stitches. So basically I'm just going to sew either side of the seam that's already sewn, that stitch in the ditch seam that I already did. And I'm gonna do that the whole way across the corset. So I just remembered I actually want to put some other fabric over the back lacing panels before I sew the boning channels in. I'm going to try my very best to follow the current stitching which is behind this. Ideally I should have sewn this boning channel after I had attached this fabric but I forgot. Make sure that this boning still fits in. 
and it fits. So that's one boning channel and I'm going to sew another one around here and then in between these two boning channels will be where I sew the eyelets. Okay, finally. So now I need to close off the boning channel on one side, probably the bottom edge, but I do need to match up the edges and trim them. So I'm folding the corset along the center front seam. That reminds me, I haven't even sewn the boning channels into the center front. I need to sew two boning channels. Let me do that now. So I'm matching up the centre back panels and the centre front seam along the fold so then I can follow this line and trim the fabric. Should probably do the same for the top. Now I'm just going to sew off one of the edges so I can insert the boning. I'm going to cut off this part because I don't need that and when I cut it the pieces I'm going to try and curve the edges so they don't poke through my fabric and they're not sharp and then hopefully my boning channels fit my boning. Okay so that's one piece in and I'm just going to continue that the whole way along. And I'm trying to fit my boning in between the two cotton drill layers, not the velvet layer, because I want it to be in between the strongest fabrics. Um, here I've got the back pieces lined up so um, like the boning is here and here and here and here and then in between the boning on the back panels I'm going to sew eyelets along here and that will close in the back. This is what the front looks like. I need to basically just sew binding along both the bottom and top edge. I'm going to cut out some bias binding strips and I'm cutting them on the diagonal of the grain so it has a bit of stretch to it and then I'll be sewing them on. So I'm going to fold the piece inwards like that and then fold the other side to meet in the middle and then I'm going to attach it to the edge of the corset by folding it over and then pinning that in place and I'll just continue folding and pinning all the way along the edge of the corset. And when I sew these pieces, when I sew the bias binding I want to try and make sure that I grab both the bias binding on the top and on the bottom. So when I try and sew the bias binding on, I try and make sure that I catch all of the bias binding on the lining side as well but sometimes I miss it, like, for example, here. So I just go back and sew that down so these raw edges are covered. And I'm going to repeat that same process on the top edge of the corset. And you probably don't need to see me do this because it's exactly the same as the top edge. Simply trim the fabric and then apply the bias binding. So I'll get back to you once I've done the bottom edge as well. Now I've got both of the binding strips sewn on, so one on the bottom edge and then one along the top edge. And now 
there's just the eyelets to do. I'm going to mark the eyelets on the back, on the lining side of the corset, and then where the waist is, so here, I'm going to have one either side of that waist tape. You can see the outline of the waist tape there. So one either side, and I've just eyeballed those ones so they might not be exactly even. Yeah, I like to have these last ones quite close to the edge. And um, I'm going to use an awl to make the eyelet holes. Here I've got four threads and I'm going to thread all of those into a needle. I'm going to start with this bottom one, slowly widen the hole. Okay, so there's the hole and then I can start threading. So there isn't much to making an eyelet. I sort of just start my thread on the lining side and then push it through to the right side. So just going into the hole and then poking up just a little bit beside the stitch that I've already done, maybe like half a centimeter away from the hole and then pulling the thread through. So you can see there's my little first stitch and you just continue that. So into the hole, poke out next to where you've just stitched and pull the thread through. One eyelet done, another lot more to go. <laughs> so in and out of the loop, again and again and again until you have all of the eyelets done. This took me about, I think it was like an evening as well as a whole morning. So yeah, quite a few hours. And now I'm lacing the corset. So I've bought some lacing from the fabric store and I'm using the bunny lacing method. I'll link it in the description below, but basically you have two bunny ears that sit at the waistline and you can pull those um, and it will tighten everything when you put the corset on. So you can do it yourself. Um, you don't actually need a second person to help, but it is easier to have someone else um, help you tighten the corset. And that's it. The corset is done. Thank you so much for watching if you've got this far and make sure to stay tuned for the next video, which will be part two and it will go through the making of the dress to fit over this corset. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. Also leave a comment um, if you have any questions um, or just any comments in general about this video. And um, yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.